test results impact AML care and treatment decisions? So in the first place, um, the presence or absence of certain uh, mutations can be predictive of outcome. Some subsets of leukemias are, for the lack of a better term, uh, more favorable. I personally don't think there is anything favorable about any leukemia, but uh, some are easier to treat and some are easier to cure than others. There is one specific subtype uh, called acute pomyelocytic leukemia that we actually completely uh, dif uh, treat differently. Uh, we don't use even chemotherapy in that subset of leukemia, and it has a almost 100% success rate. Um, and the treatment of other subsets can also be tailored depending on these uh, molecular and chromosomal changes. So uh, the initial therapy can be actually changed. Uh, there are now, for example, targeted agents that can be added to the chemotherapy, to initial chemotherapy. And also once the patient is in remission, depending on how favorable or unfavorable their leukemia is, they may be offered allogeneic stem cell transplant. So yes, this information is highly important. In fact, I would say crucial for our decision-making in um, leukemia therapy these days. So what is new in AML research related to molecular markers? Well, it depends on your definition of new, but uh, our FLT3 uh, mutations are very important because there are now several FLT3 inhibitors. And as I mentioned, the initial therapy is uh, different uh, to some extent. Um, the IDH mutations are very important, again, because there are specific targeted agents. Uh, P53 mutations are mu important because, unfortunately, they are particularly unfavorable. This is completely uh, hot off the press, but uh, there are uh, subsets of AML called MLL rearranged leukemias that uh, can respond uh, to these drugs called menin inhibitors. Um, other, there are other mutations that have been discovered, many other ones, uh, that uh, there are no specific treatments for at the moment, but there's a lot of research on it.